a shalom makim shalom first and foremost i'm going to give all praises and glory and honor is due to yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem harakadash i'd like to give double honors unto the elder and the apostles of great millstone that rule well blessings and salutations be to the hopeful like brethren you know, in the gospel, bro, I left them to stand in the behalf of Hashem, Yahweh Shai, wherever they may be. This is the Aki and Mahalaya coming back with another lesson through the Spirit. Lord's will be uh, edifying. Uh, this is just a lesson through the Spirit. Kind of made mention of it of the previous in transit. Going into, like, the history of the Civil War. The Civil War that befalls America. Um, as you know, tomorrow is Election Day. When the majority of the country, for the most part, is going to go down to these polls to vote for particular politicians and Senators and governors and so forth like that to make their alleged situation better But what does the scripture say about these said endeavors? Okay, because no matter who you put in office or what you want to see change change is gonna come with you How about you? How shy? Move in the hands of prophecy and time Okay, it's not gonna be some type of uh, dictator or some type of uh, uh, a Moniker that's set up to rule the people in righteousness outside of Yahweh shy and his men because all the men that the Lord set up in this society is corrupt, okay? And you're going to see mass corruption. But see, this country is so desperate at this point to the point that they are willing to, to sacrifice and galvanize themselves to go to these polls to vote for, for, for opposing forces when they don't even realize that they don't have their best interests. And Esau is playing off that narrative that these people are going to just lose it, man, okay? Because if things don't get better for these people, you can really say that we're heading towards a civil war. And you can very well see that because the article says these conditions <clears throat> are right for political violence. How close is the U.S. to civil war? Especially with everybody being on edge, the hatred, the tension. Okay, the families are dividing, relationships are separating, uh, uh, office relationships as far as uh, uh, governments, you know, and principalities or municipalities are not seeing eye to eye. Okay, the police, the forces is divided. The military is divided. The Lord is pouring out the spirit of division in America. And you have to figure out which side you're going to fall on. Because if you don't fall on the side of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, then you good as dead, man. Okay, so this is the American Civil War, which took place April 12th, 1861, into May 26th, 1865, which was roughly four and a half or four years or so. Okay. But it says, also known by other names, <clears throat> was a civil war in the United States. <clears throat> it said it was fought between the United States, the Union, or the North, and the Confederacy, which is the, st the South, which is when you get the Confederate States, you know, the Confederate flag. But it says, which was formed by states that succeeded. Okay, it says, the central cause of the war, Salakium, was a dispute over whether slavery would be permitted to expand into the Western territories, leading to more slave states, or to be prevented from doing so, which was widely believed would place slavery on the course of ultimate extinction, okay? Because both, basically, the North and the South, they had slaves, okay? But see, the North was more on corporate status, and then the South was more like a, a independent-type ordeal, which is your Confederate states. They believe in owning states to their own jurisdiction, and they said, well, look, fuck it, we don't need to put them as far as on the corporate grid, because... If we do that, then that's going to kind of fuck with us. Then we're going to have to share our slaves and do X, Y, and Z, which is hence now you have the corporate world, okay? Social security numbers, uh, tax ID numbers, business accounts, uh, whatever you buy, whatever you want to call it. But ultimately, the new uh, 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 slave stipend, so to speak, is going to be that MOTB. And we believe through the spirit that this coming calamity uh, whatever Esau deems fit in the spirit on the left hand side, the most high is gonna use this devil to, to do something so catastrophic to the point he's gonna pretty much uh, uh he's gonna pretty much uh uh <clears throat> bring in an MOTB and we think that that's gonna happen through several stages. Civil war first and foremost, which will plunge this country into chaos overnight, which will lead to a, a economic collapse. And then on top of that, you have these bank runs which they're switching over to CBDC or the Central Bank Digital Currency, okay, which is set to start December 13th of this year, which is <laughs> roughly uh, five weeks away. Now, we don't know if they're going to go uh, slightly about five and a half weeks away. Now, we don't know if they're going to phase out cash that day. Uh, me personally, I think it's going to come over a gradual course of time because, I mean, honestly speaking, people are shopping at holidays and shit like that. I don't think they... Uh, want to disrupt people's holiday season so to speak right now but 
we don't know how it's going to go. We're just going to play it through the spirit. But nonetheless, man, a civil war is brewing here in America, and you can read the history on it. Okay. Um, it says decades of political controversy, which is what we're seeing now through these different Democrats, Republicans. Okay. You got a. Uh, uh, what's this guy's name? Joe Biden. You got his cabinet. You got a uh, what's this clown's name? Uh, 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 Con not Condoleezza Rice. What's this, this this black nigga? Well, the, the the Amazonian giants, Kamala Harris, the East Indian, the Elamite, Elamite chick. Okay, Biden. You got the cabinet. You got Trump. Okay, which they're basically allegedly raided his home for the January sixth so called insurrection, which that wasn't a fucking insurrection, man. Okay, that was all put in play. In order to pass certain laws, in order to be able to roll on so-called radicals, because we see what they're going with this thing, with the whole Israelite thing being back in the news media. This has been an every year thing. Now they've been putting the Israelites back in the media, one form or fashion. And now that you have this thing between Ye, uh, what's my man named Kyrie Irving, you got uh, Floyd Mayweather allegedly hopping on board. We don't know where that's gonna go, but uh, also you have uh, uh, this guy Shaquille O'Neal. You got the other nigga. That the big head nigga, the, the grapefruit head nigga, Shannon Sharp, I call him the black Sheryl Underwood. That's the male equivalent version. No, he's the female equivalent of Sheryl Underwood because Sheryl Underwood is a fucking man anyway. All right. And then you got this other nigga, Charles Barkley. That, 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 that fucking nigga. Okay. But nonetheless, man, you got these, this, it's just a big division. And the fact that the Israelites are getting all this notoriety, Esau is getting ready to catch this world off guard with something big, man. So we got to keep our eyes glued to the prophecies and, hey, pay attention, wake up, you know. But anyway, um, it says controversy over slavery will brought to the head by the victory in the 1860 U.S. presidential election of Abraham Lincoln, who opposed slavery's expansion into the West, which this nigga had slaves, man. OK, he had slaves and he used the nigga word quite often. And you can look that up. OK, but uh, anyway, it says uh, responded to Lincoln's victory by succeeding from the United States in 1861, forming the Confederacy. OK, so uh, that's just a brief history on 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 the Civil War. But they said over a hundred or well, over a million plus dead. OK, slaves died, disease, 80,000, 50,000 free civilians dead. OK, the death toll was a million plus, man. You see. So, hey, man, just imagine on this grave scale of something this big, there's going to be a bloodbath out here. OK, so uh, going back to this article, um, it says the conditions are right for political violence. How close is the U.S. to civil war? OK, because it says Americans are increasingly talking about civil war. But in August, after the FBI raided Donald Trump's Florida home, Twitter referenced the civil war jumped up to three thousand percent. It says Trump supporters immediately went online, tweeting threats that a civil war would start if Trump was indicted. It says one account wrote, it is civil war clock yet. And another said, get ready for an uprising. Then Lizzie Graham, a Republican senator from South Carolina, said that there would be riots in the streets if Trump was indicted, which we know this is all folly, man, because Trump, he works for them as well. OK, Trump isn't some savior that he's going to save the Edomite race. But when he made or uh, was talking about making America great again, hey, I guess he had the best interest in the elites, but he was still playing ball with the elites because at the end of the day, he has the best interest of the elite bankers. OK, but they just put this guy uh, Biden in there because basically he's going to do what Trump failed to do. And that's why they got Trump up out of there, you know, and now they demonizing him. But regardless, you know, two sides of the same bird, you know, one wing, left wing, right wing. <laughs> but it's still the same bird. All right. But it says, uh, uh, it says Trump himself predicted that terrible things are going to happen. But if the temperature wasn't brought down in the country, but perhaps most troubling, America's on both sides of the political divide increasingly state that violence is justified. <laughs> but it says in January 2022, 34% of Americans surveyed said that it was sometimes okay to use violence against the government. And seven months later, more than 40% said they believed the Civil War was at least somewhat likely in the next 10 years. <laughs> Two years ago, no one was talking about a second American Civil War, but today it is common. And pay attention, I mean, when you look at the people, when you look at how they are, how they operate, how they deal with one another, you can clearly see that these people are on edge, man, and they're ready to fucking lose it. You see, because, hey, they... Inflation itself 
that's a driving force behind many people's frustration because they find out that the money don't have the purchasing power that it once did. And then the jobs and then the whole COVID shit, you know, people, they don't they don't have the optimist they once had as far as America being a great country because they're seeing it now for what it is. And they're seeing that their government don't really give a shit about them. OK, and that's good for you people, because, hey, now you're seeing for what it is. OK, you're seeing America for exactly what it was and what it and what it's and what it's accomplished, which is nothing but oppression to the point that the Edomite is being oppressed by his own government. OK, because we already said Esau Edom, hey, he's going to be the one that kicked off the civil war. You know, Esau is going to be the one that's going to do it. You niggas, you ain't going to do shit, but sit back and suck your goddamn thumbs. Until somebody takes your shit from you. But Esau, he ain't going. He, he's going to kick this civil war off. And he's going to take a lot of you niggas with him. Rightfully so. You know. Uh, so anyway. I had another article here too. And I typed Blood Moon Election Day. It says there is no coincidence that the Blood Moon Lunar Eclipse is on Election Day. Hmm, That's a heavy omen. Okay. Because we're not saying shit going to pop off tomorrow. OK, I mean, we ain't saying that at all. But regardless of when you see these signs, that means that, hey, this is it. Something big is getting ready to occur. It says blood moon will merge on Election Day and last total lunar eclipse for three years. Blood moon total lunar eclipse to take place early on Election Day. And the Internet has thoughts. So let's click on that. See what it says, because these are all signs that you how about Shimi how shy is. It's showing the world, man, and I can't get it because I don't have Boston Globe. I don't have that, I think. Do I have that? Nope. Yeah, I do. Oh, come on, man. <clears throat> I'm not paying y'all shit, so can't go there. Let's see what it says here. Black News Hour. Let's see what it tells us. Okay, it says a total lunar eclipse early Tuesday morning will turn the moon a dusty copper red. And the Internet seems to divide about what this portends for Election Day. It says anyone with well, anyone who is into omens kindly assure me that democracy is not going to end. Thank you. One Twitter user joke. But I shout out people stupid. These people is because democracy, which goes into people's rule. That's what it means. It means the rule of the people. But ask yourself, are the people really ruling? Okay, are you really ruling or are you really under dictatorship? Okay, are you really under a communist type society? Because, like I said, a uh, democracy is when people actually rule, and the majority rules. And you people, you ain't ruling the damn thing. Okay, you enslaved to your taxes, to your jobs. You owe taxes, man. They gonna take shit from you, man. You know, so people are not ruling. You have corporations that's put in play to make your decisions for you, and to ultimately police you into making decisions by manipulation. So how the hell is this a democracy? It's not, clearly. Okay. But it says, so what exactly is happening? It says on Tuesday morning, which yes, just happens to be election day, the moon will pass into the earth's shadow and turn a, <coughs> a reddish hue, which is <coughs> Salaki, which is why lunar eclipses are sometimes called blood moons, according to NASA. And this celestial event won't happen again for another three years. And they say that. Want to end up popping up next month, you know, because that's how the Lord works. But anyway, uh, let's get into some of these precepts here, just real quick. This is the book of uh, Second Andrew 6, and I'm gonna start at verses 22. It says, And suddenly, should the sown places appear unsown, and the full storehouses should suddenly be found empty. Okay, what's that? Your stores, okay, your, your restaurants, your box stores, your malls. Okay, when you think of something being sewn together, when you go to those outdoor malls, like you may have a Walmart, you have a Kmart. And then you have a Payless or the particular Rosses and Macy's and so forth. They're all connected. The scriptures say that they shouldn't subtly be unsown, meaning that they're going to close down. Because another thing, too, is this inflation. Okay, everybody is going to the polls because now they're nervous about inflation. And with the current presidential um, uh, 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 candidates that's in office, they really believe and they don't have hope for this new this this administration, man. So they're hoping to go to the polls and being able to turn things around. But as stupid as these Americans are, you would think that they would have some type of sense to know that no matter how much you vote, it hasn't changed a fucking thing. OK, when they put Obama's ass in there, what happened? Shit happened. OK, he looked out for the rich. He didn't look out for you niggas. But yet you niggas are the main one that went down there and voted for him. Same thing with Biden, man. OK, they're giving homosexuals rights. They're, they're protecting the, 
the 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 the, uh, the Jewish motherfuckers they protecting them people, but yet you Jakes you ain't got nothing off the hog, you know. And it says, and a trumpet should be given a sound, should give a sound, which when every man hear it, they should suddenly be afraid. And that trumpet is gonna come when the destruction comes, man, because we're sounding the alarm, we're singing a song, <coughs> we're warning you week in and week out. Okay, brothers are doing shows every single day, getting this information out there, but yet you know you turn a blind eye to us. But when it happens, and when all hell break loose in your cities, and when they declare martial law in these cities, you have curfews, you can't go down a block without having the proper, the appropriate paperwork. Then <clears throat> you people are going to be afraid. Then you're going to be yelling. What was those guys on the corner saying? Because you people know about us, man. But, you know, you write us off as jokes. And not only that, you know, you want to have fun until you can't have fun no more. Okay, you like the couple that was on a Titanic until it went down. You know, you, you missed the lifeboat, so therefore you want to stay on the ship as long as possible. And when it went down, you got plunged under with the ship. That's you people. And it says in that time, friends should fight. Uh, one against another like enemies man okay this is a civil war okay because what civil goes into the civilians the people this is going to be a civil war which they're going to use that to enact martial law and don't think that it's above esau to send uh mercenaries from different countries posing as particular militia groups to set shit off man that's nothing like what esau can do that's a light thing because he's known for hiring 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 private security to come in and destabilize areas and blame it on another group when it was him the whole time just to get shit started, just like the purge. The purge wasn't kicking off fast enough among you, Jake. So what he did, he hired mercenaries from Blackwater, which was uh, those Russian mercenaries, man. Okay? The real deal. You see? So, hey, it makes sense that he has sleeper cells over here already. And then they was already stating that it was a caravan coming from, like, those, uh, I think it was out there in Venezuela, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, if it wasn't Venezuela, it was one of those uh, uh, Central American countries that basically they was releasing the violent of 